Hey everybody, um, just been spending some time um, modifying my channel so that it's easier to read um, like the different descriptions of what everything is, like my dreams and visions, um, and then separating the music and stuff like that. Um, but I wanted to go into, um, into reading this tonight, which is... Um, it, it's, you can find it a lot of places, but it, I'm reading it out of the Great Commission, the Great Commission, the Acts and the Apostles, sorry, the Acts and the Gospels of the Apostles, number one, and on page 118 starts the Acts of the Holy Apostle Thomas. Uh, Thomas was the disciple that went to India to preach the gospel. Um, when I, um was at probably at one of my lowest points right before um, I left for uh, Texas. I had never left New Hampshire before and I moved um, to I moved to Texas and um, before I went there um, it was I was only making like seven hundred dollars every two weeks. I could barely afford to like even you know eat and uh, I was like living with my parents and I had to drive an hour to work and um, my Dodge Neon, it was a manual and it wouldn't start. So I had to like push it in the snow to get it to like put it in second and jump start it to like force the car to start. So every day after work, like my friends would push me and I'd start the car to leave. <laughs> and um, I was just really depressed about all this. And um, even so, I was actually doing like pretty good in sales for like just starting out. Um, but you don't get commission from it. It's just like you get to keep your job, um, basically. So what I did is every day um, I would walk around the building seven times, like kind of like Jericho. And I was listening to Isaiah through my headphones pacing around the building. And everybody's like, why are you walking so fast? Like, like, you look like you're on a mission, and I was. I was, like, asking God, what should I do, like, with my life? And um, <clears throat> when I came back in from lunch one day, I sat down, and I just happened to be searching on the Internet, like, randomly, and I found this text, which was the first apocryphal text that I had ever read. And I was like, man, I was like, I always wondered what happened to the other 12 disciples, because we only have you know, a few stories of what they actually did. God, Jesus said, like, I send you out to do all this work, but none of the work is really in the Bible. It's only what Paul did, you know, which I believe, you know, Paul's work is authentic too. A lot of people don't. Um, they think he was like a hypocrite or something like that because some, some of the things he says, people say they contradict what Jesus says, but it's not true. They just don't understand Paul. That's why he's a prisoner in all of his writings is because his words are prisoners, basically. So, like, I'll explain that later, but um, I wanted to read you this text tonight. I'm probably not going to get through all of it. It's like two parts, but very, very interesting text, especially the beginning is very interesting. So let's start reading this. Um, I was also going to read later. Um, this is the psalms like david's psalms but it's the targum version which is the original translation from the aramaic when they first came into the land that's what it is the targums the first translation um and it's very interesting the translation like it's so it's just so direct it's not like the english like the like old english is very like not the way that we speak you know like i don't i think the words colloquial colloquially or something like that like it's just very the vernacular is very uh easy to understand so i'm gonna read that to you also later um but let's read this so this is the acts of the holy apostle thomas translation and notes by mr james the first act when he went into india with a Baines, the merchant at that season all we the apostles were at jerusalem Simon, which is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, the brother of James, 
And we divided the regions of the world, that every one of us should go unto the region that fell to him, and unto the nation whereunto the Lord sent him. <clears throat> According to the lot there, for India fell unto Judas Thomas, which is also the twin. But he would not go, saying that by reason of the weakness of the flesh he could not travel. And I'm a Hebrew man, how can I go amongst the Indians and preach the truth? And as he thus reasoned and spake, the Saviour appeared unto him by night, and saith him, saith him, Fear not, Thomas, go thou unto India and preach the word there, for my grace is with thee. But he would not obey, saying, Whither thou wouldest send me, send me, but elsewhere, for unto the Indians I will not go. And while he thus spake and thought, it chanced that there was a certain merchant come from India, whose name was Abanes, sent from the king Gundaforas. Gundaforas is a historical personage, personage who reigned over a part of India in the first century after Christ. His coins bear his name in Greek as Hindoferes, and having commandment from him to buy a carpenter and bring him unto him. Now the Lord, seeing him walking in the marketplace at noon, said unto him, Wouldest thou buy a carpenter? And he said to him, Yea. And the Lord said to him, I have a slave that is a carpenter, and I desire to sell him. And so saying, he showed him Thomas afar off, and agreed with him for three litre of silver unstamped, and wrote a deed of sale, saying, I, Jesus, the son of Joseph the carpenter, acknowledge that I have sold my slave Judas by name unto thee, Abanes, a merchant of Gundaforus, king of the Indians. And when the deed was finished, the Savior took Judas Thomas and led him away to Abanes the merchant. And when Abanes saw him, he said unto him, is this thy master? And the apostle said, Yea, he is my Lord. And he said, I have bought thee of him. And thy apostle held his peace. And on the day following, the apostle rose early, and having prayed and besought the Lord, he said, I will go whither thou wilt, Lord Jesus, thy will be done. And he departed unto Abanes the merchant, taking with him nothing at all, save only his price. For the Lord had given it unto him, saying, Let thy price also be with thee, together with my grace, wheresoever thou goest. <clears throat> and the apostle found Abanes carrying his baggage on board the ship. So he also began to carry it aboard with him. And when they were embarked on the ship, they were set down. Abanes questioned the apostle, saying, What craftsmanship knowest thou? And he said, In wood I can make plows and yokes and augers or ox goads, and boats, and oars for boats, and masts, and pulleys, and in stone pillars, and temples, and courthouses for kings. And Abanes the merchant said to him, Yea, it is of such a workman that we have need. They began then to sail homeward, and they had a favorable, favorable wind, and sailed prosperously, till they reached Adrapolis, a royal city. And they left the ship, and entered into the city, and lo, there were noises of flutes and water organs and trumpets sounded about them. And the apostle inquired, saying, What is this festival that is in this city? And they that were there said to him, Ye also have the gods brought to make merry in this city, for the king hath an only daughter, and now he giveth her in marriage unto her husband. This rejoicing, therefore, an assembly of the wedding to the day is the festival which thou hast seen. And the king hath sent heralds to proclaim everywhere that all should come to the marriage rich and poor, bond and free, strangers and citizens. And if any refuse and come not to the marriage, he shall answer for it unto the king. And Abanes, hearing that, said to the apostle, Let us also go, lest we offend the king, especially seeing we are strangers. And he said, Let us go. And after they had put up in the inn and rested a little space, they went to the marriage. And the apostle, seeing them all set down, reclining, laid himself, he also in the midst, and all looked upon him as upon a stranger, and one come from a foreign land. But Abanes the merchant, being his master, laid himself in another place. And as they dined and drank, the apostle tasted nothing, so that they that were about him said unto him, Wherefore art thou come here, neither eating nor drinking? But he answered them, saying, I am come here for somewhat greater than the food or the drink, and I am that I may fulfill the king's will. For the heralds proclaim the king's message, and whoso hearkeneth not to the heralds shall be subject to the king's judgment. So when they had dined and drunken, and the garlands of unguents were brought to them, every man took of his unguent, and one anointed his face, and another his beard, and another other parts of his body. But the apostle anointed the top of his head, and smeared a little upon his nostrils, and dropped it into his ears, and touched his teeth with it, and carefully anointed the parts about his heart. 
and the wreath that was brought to him, woven of myrtle and other flowers, he took and set it on his head, and took a branch of calamus and held it in his hand. Now the flute girl, holding her flute in her hand, went about to them all and played and but when she came to the place where the apostle was, she stood over him and played at his head for a long space. Now this flute girl was by race a Hebrew. And as the apostle continued looking on the ground, one of the cupbearers stretched forth his hand and gave him a buffet. And the apostle lift a, lifted up his eyes and looked upon him that smote him and said, My God will forgive thee in the life to come this iniquity, but in the world that thou shalt forth his one. But in this world... Thou shalt show forth his wonders, and even now shall I behold this hand that had smitten me, had smitten me, dragged by the dogs. And having so said, he began to sing and to say this song: The damsel is the daughter of light, in whom consisteth and dwelleth the proud brightness of kings, and the sight of her is delightful. She shineth with beauty and cheer. Her garments are like the flowers of spring, and from them a waft of fragrance is born. And in the crown of her head, the king is established, which, with his immortal food. Ambrosia nourish, nourisheth them that are founded upon him, and in her head is set truth, and with her feet she showeth forth joy, and her mouth is open, and it becometh her well. Thirty and two are they that sing praises to her. Her tongue is like them of the curtain of the door, which waveth to and fro for them that enter in. Her neck is set in the fashion of steps, which the first maker hath wrought, and her two hands signify and show, proclaiming the dance of happy ages. And her fingers point out the gates of the city. Her chamber is bright with light and breatheth forth the odor of balsam and all spices and giveth out a sweet smell of myrrh and Indian leaf. And within it are myrtles strewn on the floor and of all manner of odor, odorous flowers. And the doorposts are adorned with fruits. And surrounding her, her groomsmen keep her, the number of whom is seven, whom she herself hath chosen. And her bridesmaids are seven, and they dance before her. And twelve in number are they that serve before her and are subject unto her, which her, have her their aim and their look toward the bridegroom, that by the sight of him they may be delighted, may be enlightened, and forever shall they be with her in that eternal joy, and shall be at that marriage whereto the princes are gathered together, and shall attend at the banquet whereof the eternal ones are accounted worthy, and shall put on royal raiment, and be clad in bright robes, and enjoy and exaltation shall they be both be and shall glorify the father of all whose proud light they have received and are enlightened by the sight of their lord whose immortal food they have received and hath no failing and have drunk of the wine that giveth then neither thirst nor desire and they have glorified and praised with the living spirit the father of truth and the mother of wisdom see all the things that he was saying right there are the spiritual things he's talking about what Jesus said when he said, if you don't know about earthly things, how could I ever tell you about heavenly things? These things that Thomas was just saying is what it says in the Nag Hammadi Codices. It's what Philip speaks of. And you see what it said right there? The father of truth and the mother of wisdom. See, that's what I tried to say to people all the time is that the father God, he and wisdom... It's like the father and the mother, and then the child is Jesus. It's a holy trinity, and it's a holy unity. It's something that has been for everlasting. Wisdom is what it was talking about here with the seven, the seven um, groomsmen that keep her. It's talking about wisdom. Wisdom is what went to Solomon, and that is the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Um... So, obviously, Jesus spoke to the twelve about heavenly things. He explained to them much more than the rest of other people got to know. Like, And so, the books that Daniel shut up for the wise are these books that were dug up out of Qumran and um, the Dead Sea Scrolls and things like that. So, you don't have to just stop at like... Even if you accept Enoch, you should. He's the righteous scribe. But, I mean, you can even go further on to reading texts like this. And it expounds upon your own understanding of the Gospels and of, of the wisdom of God and what he told his inner circle of people. And when he had sung and ended this song, all that were there present gazed upon him, and he kept silence. 
and they saw that his likeness was changed, but that which was spoken by him they understood not. For as much as he was a Hebrew, and that which he spake was said in Hebrew tongue, but the flute girl alone heard all of it, and she was by race a Hebrew, and she went away from him and played to the rest, but for the most part she gazed and looked upon him, for she loved him well as a man of her own nation. Moreover, he was comely to look upon beyond all that were there. And when the flute girl had played to them all and ended, she sat down over against him, gazing and looking earnestly upon him. But he looked upon no man at all, neither took heed of any, but only kept his eyes looking toward the ground, waiting the time when he might depart thence. But the cupbearer that had buffeted him went down to the well to draw water, and there chanced to be a lion there, and it slew him and left him lying in that place, having torn his limbs in pieces and forthwith dogs seized his members, and among them one black dog holding his right hand in his mouth bare it into the place of the banquet. Before I go on to read this next portion, what happened was he offered him food that was sacrificed unto idols, and for that he that that's why this boy died. He said, you'll be forgiven in the next life, but not in this life. And that's why he was attacked by the the animal and it ate him. And all that was left was his, with it was his hand. And that he said that was going to happen. Now, this is the same thing that happened, I'm pretty sure, to uh, Elijah when he was being teased by those boys. They worked for the temple and they were like temple, like, priests or something like that of the false god and they were making fun of him for being bald and then they were attacked and killed also so it's a similar thing verse 9 and all when they saw it were amazed and inquired which of them it was that was missing and when it became manifest that it was the hand of the cupbearer which had smitten the apostle the flute girl break her flute and cast it away and went and sat down at the apostle's feet saying this is either a god or an apostle of god for i heard him say in hebrew tongue i shall now see the hand that hath smitten me dragged by dogs which thing ye also have now beheld for as he said so hath it come about and some believed her and some not but when the king heard of it he came and said to the apostle, Rise up and come with me and pray for my daughter, for she is mine only begotten, and today I give her in marriage. But the apostle was not willing to go with him, for the Lord was not yet revealed unto him in that place. But the king led him away against his will unto the bride chamber, that he might pray for them. And the apostle stood and began to pray and to seek thus, My Lord and my God, that travelest with thy servants, that guidest and correctest them, that believe in thee, the refuge and rest of the oppressed, the hope of the poor, and the ransomer, of captives, the physician of the souls that lie sick, and Savior of all creation, that givest life unto the world and strengthenest souls. Thou knowest things to come, and by our means accomplishest them. Thou, Lord, art he that revealeth hidden mysteries, and make manifest words that are secret. Thou, Lord, art the planter of good tree, of the good tree, and of thine hands are all good works engendered. Thou, Lord, art he that art in all things, and passest through all and art set in all thy works, and manifested in the working of them all. Jesus Christ, Son of compassion, and perfect Savior Christ, Son of the living God, the undaunted power that hast overthrown the enemy, and the voice that was heard of the rulers, and made all their powers to quake, the ambassador that was sent from the height, and came us down even unto hell, who didst open the doors and bring up thence them that for many ages were shut up in the treasury of darkness. Boom. Gospel of Nicodemus right there. That's what he's talking about. Jesus went down to Hades, and this proves wrong Joyce Meyer and Kenneth Copeland. They both, in both of their sermons, say that Jesus was, like, tortured and stuff in hell when he went down there. But they're liars. They're wrong. It's But we don't have the scripture, so they can twist whatever they want because they don't... Nobody says that that is the word of God, but it is the word of God. Gospel of Nicodemus, this... And many other texts are the word of God. It's the testament of the Holy Spirit, which is a feminine spirit. <clears throat> like I said to you a minute ago, wisdom is a feminine spirit. And they deny all these things so that they lead people into a pit. They themselves are going into the pit and they lead other people into the pit. That's what Jesus said also. So, and show us them the way that leadeth up unto the height. Because Jesus took them directly out of Hades. He grabbed Adam by the hand. And all the saints were following after him. And lead, he was leading them to paradise. And that's what it's saying right there. 
I beseech thee, Lord Jesus, and offer unto thee supplication for these young persons that thou wouldest do for them the things that, that, that shall help them and be expedient and profitable for them. And he laid his hands on them and said, Lord shall be with you, and left them in the place and departed. And the king desired the groomsmen to depart out of the bride chamber, and when all were gone out, the doors were shut. The bridegroom lifted up the curtain of the bride chamber to fetch the bride unto him. And he said, and he saw the Lord Jesus bearing the likeness of Judas Thomas and speaking with the bride, even of him that but now had blessed them and gone out from them, the apostle. And he said unto them, Wentest thou not out in the sight of all? How then art thou found here? But the Lord said to him, I am not Judas, which is also called Thomas, but I am his brother. And the Lord sat down upon the bed and bade them also sit upon chairs and began to say unto them, Remember, my children, what my brother spake unto you. And what he delivered before you. And know this, that if ye abstain from this foul intercourse, ye become holy temples, pure, being quite of, quit of impulses and pains, seen and unseen. And ye will acquire no cares of life or of children, whose end is destruction. And if indeed ye get many children, for their sakes ye become grasping and covetous and stripping orphans and overreaching widows. And by so doing, subject yourselves to grievous punishments. For the more part of children become useless, oppressed of devils some openly and some invisibly, for they become either lunatic or half-withered or blind or deaf or dumb or paralytic or foolish. And if they be sound, again they will be vain, doing useless or abominable acts, for they will be caught either in adultery or murder or theft or fornication. And by all these will they be afflicted. And by all these will ye be afflicted. But if ye be persuaded and keep your souls chaste before God, there will come unto you living children, whose these blemishes touch not and ye shall be without care leading a tranquil life without grief or anxiety looking to receive that incorruptible and true marriage and ye shall be therein groomsmen entering into the bride chamber which is full of immortality and light and when the young people heard these things they believed the lord and gave themselves up unto him and he abstained from foul desire and continued so passing the night in that place and the lord departed from before them saying thus the grace of the lord shall be with you and when the morning was come the king came to meet them and furnished the table and brought it in before the bridegroom and the bride and he found them sitting over against each other and the face of the bride he found unveiled and the bridegroom was right joyful and the mother came into the bride and said why sittest thou so child and are not ashamed but art as if thou hadst lived with thine husband a long season. And her father said, Because of thy great love toward thine husband, dost thou not even veil thyself? And the bride answered and said, Verily, father, I am in great love, and I pray, my lord, that the love which I have perceived this night may abide with me. And I will ask for that husband of whom I have learned today, and therefore I will no more veil myself, because the mirror, the veil of shame, is removed from me. And therefore... Am I no more ashamed or abashed, because the deed of shame and confusion is departed far from me? And that I am not confounded, it is because my astonishment hath not continued with me, and that I am in cheerfulness and joy. It is because the day of my joy hath not been troubled, and that I have set at naught this husband and this marriage that passes away from before mine eyes. It is because I am joined to another in marriage, and that I have no had no intercourse with a husband that is temporal. Whereof the end is with lasciviousness and bitterness of soul, it is because I am yoked unto a true husband. And while the bride was saying yet more than this, the bridegroom answered and said, I give thee thanks, O Lord, that hast been proclaimed by the stranger and found in us, who hast removed me far from the corruption and sown life in me, and who hast rid me of this disease that is hard to be healed and cured and abideth forever, and hast implanted sober health in me who hast shown me thyself and revealed unto me all my state wherein I am, who hast redeemed me from falling and led me to that which is better, and set me free from temporal things and made me worthy of those that are immortal and everlasting, that hast made thyself lowly even down to me and my littleness, and that mayest present me unto the greatness and unite me unto thyself, who hast not withheld thine own bowels from me that was ready to perish, but hast shown me how to seek myself and know who I was, and who in what manner I now am, that I may again become that which I was, who I knew not, but thyself did seek me out, of whom I was not aware, but thyself hast taken me to thee, whom I have perceived, and now am not able to be unmindful of him, whose love burneth within me, I cannot speak, it is as it as is fit, but that which I am able to say of 
it is little and scanty and not filthy proportion unto his glory. Yet he blameth me not for the presumed to say unto him even that which I know not. For it is because of his love that I even that I say even this much. Now when the king heard these things from the bridegroom and the bride, he rent his clothes and said unto him, said unto them that stood by, Go forth quickly and go about the whole city and take and bring me that man that is a sorcerer who by ill fortune came into the city. For with mine own hands I brought him into this house, and I told him to pray over this mine ill-starred daughter, and whosoever findeth him and bring him to me, I will give him whatsoever he asks of me. They went therefore and went about seeking him, and found him not, for he had set sail. They went also unto the inn where he had lodged, and found there the flute girl weeping and afflicted, because he had not taken her with him. And when they told her the matter that had befallen with the young people, she was exceedingly glad at hearing it, and put away her grief, and said, Now have I also found rest here. And she rose up and went unto them, and was with them a long time, until they had instructed the king also. And many of the brethren also gathered unto the, until they had heard the report of the apostle, that he was come unto the cities of India, and was teaching there. And they departed and joined themselves unto him. So we're at 25 minutes. Uh, I'm going to do um, the second act in a different video. Um, but that whole portion of that, obviously we know Abraham was the father of many nations. He had like three wives. Um, so in my opinion, this is a text that is trying to teach you like the spiritualness of what he was talking about. Like the spiritual sanctity of marriage. Like a marriage between you and God um, in the spirit sense. So, um, if you're married and, or you have kids, I mean, you are obviously, obviously know it's true what he's saying, because a lot of people's children, they're not really that good. You know, a lot of people's children are, um, you know, thieves, robbers, murderers. I mean, we all are, but what the Lord was saying was true. It's just that in my opinion, it's a spiritual thing. So, um, that being said, I, I will pick this up on the other side um, for the second portion, which is unbelievable. You're not going to even believe, like, if you've never heard this before, it's really powerful. Um, there's two huge portions of the story that are just amazing. Um, but um, if you've made it this far um, in the video, I would ask that um, you just pray um, for one of our subscribers. He's... Um, in the same day, his son went in for surgery and his brother got in a fight that wasn't, he was like attacked and, and uh, is not doing very well. Um, so if you could just pray for our brother, um, that would be awesome. And um, I will continue to pray for all of you as well. Uh, God bless you all and have a great night.